This week we focus on abiotic drivers of vegetation, namely climatic variables, temperature and precipitation. At a global scale, patterns in climate change dramatically with latitude and with altitude. It's no surprise that tropical rainforests grow in areas of very high rainfall and favourable temperatures and sparse shrubby vegetation grows in environments 30 degrees north and south of the equator. Likewise, as you travel up a mountain, temperatures and precipitation change dramatically. So today we're going to consider three key drivers that affect vegetation distribution with respect to climate and precipitation. And these are aspect, altitude and topography. And often these three drivers interact with each other. Let's start with aspect as a key driver of vegetation patterns. In southeastern Australia, a lot of our cool, wet weather comes up from the Southern Ocean. And as a result, the south side of mountains and ridges can support vegetation with high rainfall requirements, like the forest behind me. Southern aspects also receive less direct sunlight. In contrast, northern aspects tend to be a lot drier as they intercept the sun directly at midday, even in winter. And when weather comes in from the north, it's usually travelled over a big dry continent, and so it's not laden with moisture. At broad scales, the effect of aspect and altitude can interact to produce orographic rainfall, whereby moisture laden air hits a mountain range and is forced up to higher altitudes. Being pushed higher into the atmosphere causes the water vapour to condense and cool and ultimately cause rain. So nearer the top of a mountain, and particular on southern aspects, rainfall is generally much higher than lower down the mountain. Let's go up the mountain now and have a look at some of the differences in altitude, topography and aspect. The altitude can also strongly influence the temperature due to the effect of the lapse rate decrease with height for an atmospheric variable like temperature. Air gets colder as it gets higher due to changes in pressure as well as factors like continental land masses. Alpine areas in southeastern Australia have an adiabatic flaps rate of about 0.77 degrees for every 100 metres in elevation. So for even relatively low mountains like Lake Mountain where I am today, it's going to be about 11 degrees cooler up here than at sea level in Melbourne, all other things being equal. Altitude is also a surrogate for many other environmental variables in addition to temperature. Ultraviolet radiation increases, it's often windier, and of course it's wetter due to the orographic rainfall and denser, colder air. These environmental factors therefore influence which types of plants can grow here. Those which have special adaptations to survive harsh conditions. So they might have tough leaves, uh, furry, tomatose leaves, or tightly packed growing regions of meristematic tissues. At smaller scales, local topography and interactions with other plants can override the main effects of aspect and altitude. For example, small herbaceous plants which need protection from winds and frosts might still grow at high altitude, but only if it's out of the wind, like on the side of a rock or behind a shrub. More exposed and windy parts of the landscape, like ridges and summits, therefore support the hardier species like prostrate shrubs and grasses. In some cases, snow can accumulate on the lee side of ridges and provide a stable, wind-free habitat. And some plants are adapted to living in these snow patch zones, where snow can last well into the summer months. But low parts of the landscape can also experience some really harsh conditions. Frost hollows or cold air drainage basins are simply low areas of land that occur in alpine or subalpine landscape that can get remarkably cold due to cold air draining into these areas. In addition, these areas tend not to accumulate lots of snow because they're usually lower in the landscape. And so plants here experience some of the coldest temperatures on the continent, down to minus 20 in extreme cases. In frost hollows, trees are notably absent and construction costs for trees are likely to be too high to build woody tissues. And instead, frost hollows are dominated by some occasional shrubs, grasses and a few herbs. And so to summarise, remember that climatic factors like temperature and precipitation also interact with aspect, altitude and topography, as we've seen here at Lake Mountain. 
And so the job of a plant ecologist is to unravel these interacting effects to determine why plants